see you again, and welcome to my brand new Art Attack Try It Yourself video. In fact, this is the third in a series of three videos in a set, but I'll tell you more about that later. Now, you know Art Attack by now. It's all about having fun with art. Well, this video is all about making things the Art Attack way. Now, I'm sure you have loads of ideas of your own, but there are plenty of ideas that you can try out straight away on this video. Now, on Art Attack itself, I try not to use any fancy art materials. Instead, I use a load of old rubbish. <laughs> Literally. I don't throw anything away. I keep leftover bits and pieces in my special art store. And here it is. Look at this lot. <laughs> now, there are hundreds of potential Art Attacks in here. With this lot and some ordinary PVA glue, you can create almost anything. Now, you will have seen me using this stuff a lot. Blue rolls, kitchen rolls, and various tissue papers. I use them all the time with PVA glue to give models and things lots of strength. By adding layers of blue roll, or kitchen roll, or basic tissue paper to your model, and gluing it into place with PVA glue, you can make even the most delicate model strong and solid. And tissue paper and glue are the starting point for this wonderful art attack. A fantasy island. Yep, you can design your very own island. It's so easy to do. To make your dream island, take a piece of cardboard box card and start by drawing a rough design of the shape of your island. And make sure you leave loads of space around the edge for the sea. Now I'm doing an island with a cove here, a beach, and two hills. Now to create the 3D shape of your island, scrunch up some balls of tissue paper or loo roll and dip them into some PVA glue mixed in equal parts with water. And just dip the bottom of those balls in and then put them onto your drawn island. Now to create hills for your island, just scrunch up bigger balls of tissue paper or loo roll and again dip those into the PVA and water mixture, just the bottom of the ball and the glue. You can actually use newspaper for this if you want and just press that onto the island. And then the messy bit. It wouldn't be art attack if there wasn't a messy bit. Yeah, I love that lot. Just slop the PVA glue all over those tissue balls and then take some more strips of tissue paper or loo roll, place those over those soggy tissue balls and then just with your fingers roughly press the tissue into the shape. I can feel it all squidgy inside there. And then make it even messier. Look at this. I can see people all over the land now going, oh, that looks terrible. Well, it'll look brilliant in a minute. More glue on the top. And then just take your paintbrush and very carefully just smooth all of that tissue into the shape of your island. And make sure you smooth some flat bits around the outside edge for the beach. Now, if you want to put some trees on your island, just screw up or scrunch up some tiny balls of tissue paper or loo roll. And place those in the glue like that. Put them into position and a dab of PVA glue on the top. When the glue dries, it'll go really hard and those trees will look brilliant. Now, if you want to create some buildings, just cut little square scraps of cardboard. That's just tiny bits of cardboard. Dab some glue. I've got loads of glue there, so I'll just put one on top of the other. And do that. And then for the roof of the building, just fold over a small square of paper. See that? Just created it to a roof. Place that on the top and position it wherever you want on the island. And the idea is to just build the island up. Just use your imagination. In fact, it's great fun trying to work out where you're going to put everything. And don't forget, it's your dream island, so you can do what you want. When the whole thing is dry, look at this. It's gone rock solid, and these really do look like cliffs. And you've got all the buildings and these solid trees up there. And now, to turn it into a paradise island. And you do this by painting it. And what I've done with this one here is I've painted the cliffs a nice grey, or you could even use brown. And the idea is to just really press your paint into all those nooks and crannies. Acrylic or poster for this, doesn't matter which paint you use. Now, for the tops of the cliffs and the trees, give it a really nice paradise feel and use some bright greens again. Just going to slot that on the top. There we 
lass, and for the trees, we could always mix in some darker greens. We could pick those trees out. We could even put some yellows on there just to pick out some highlights, make it look of nice greenery. Now for the sea, it's probably Caribbean islands, so slop on a nice Caribbean blue. We could even mix in some other blues, streak some other blues in there to give it a good water effect. Now, see this shimmering surf effect? I have to admit, I'm a cheat. To, ke to get that, I use some of this stuff, just ordinary kitchen cling film. And it's just a case of when your paint is dry, slot some glue on just to the sea area, and then just cut bits of this cling film, place them into the glue, and then wrinkle them up to create the waves. And if you do lots of waves by the cliffs, they look like crashing waves. And when you finish the whole sea, it looks something like that. And look at that. I've painted the beach a nice sandy yellow. I've painted the buildings a wooden brown. And that's it. Your own dream island. And if you do a few of them, you could create a group of dream islands. They look brilliant, don't they? Or what about creating a nightmare island? Try it yourself. Your own dream island. Now, for many of the things that I make on Art Attack, I use stuff like newspaper and cardboard box card, which you can probably find at any time. But there are some special things around your home, which are definitely worth keeping your eye on, because you want to make sure that they don't get thrown out when they're finished with. Washing up liquid bottles are a really good example. Now, I know you don't get empty ones that often, but you want to make sure that they don't just get chucked away automatically when they're finished with because they are brilliant for some art attacks. Like this one. An art attack paint tube for keeping all your art materials in. Take a look at this. Take an empty washing up liquid bottle, take the squeezy top off and thoroughly wash it out. And when it's dry, cut the bottom of the bottle. Now these plastic bottles can be quite difficult to cut, you know my motto, it's difficult, get someone else to do it. Then cut the top two centimetres from this sloping neck. And the idea is to keep two centimetres of the body on. Cut all the way round, apart from about two centimetres. So you've got a waggling hinge. Then squeeze the bottom of the bottle to get the shape of your paint tube. And securely tape it into that position. Now you can take a lot of time doing that. I don't get that much time on Art Attack, so I'm just doing it quickly to show you. Then take a sheet of newspaper, close the newspaper, and place a ruler at the bottom, and then just roll the ruler inside the newspaper, like that, and then take the ruler out and wrap that rolled piece of newspaper around the bottom of your tube, overlap it there, and where it overlaps, again, tape it thoroughly and securely into place. Just put another one on there to show you. Again, you put loads of tape on. Now, to make the top of your paint tube, take the lid off a plastic drinks bottle or a plastic milk bottle. I'm going to take this one here. Place that on the top there like that, and that will be the lid of your paint tube. And again, just tape that into place. Make it as neat as you can. Just push it on there like that. And put the tape around the edges. And then to neaten the whole thing up and make it nice and secure, mix some PVA glue with a little bit of water. Now you've seen this PVA glue before, it's the old school glue you get in the white squidgy bottles. In fact, I use this so often, people are starting to call this art attack glue. So I'll just paste some of that onto that top there. And you know what I'm going to do, you've seen me do this before, a bit of papier mache. Put little bits of newspaper on there. And the idea is to just press the newspaper down into all those nooks and crannies. And again, you can take your time doing that. And do exactly the same with the tube itself to neaten it up, slop on your glue, and stick on bigger strips of newspaper to cover all those gaps and all those joins. And it's very important that you put some bigger strips on and overlap them down inside your tube. I'll just turn that around there to show you. Just overlap them about two centimeters inside the tube. You don't want to go all the way down, just about two centimeters. And do that all around the tube, cover the tube in the same way. And when it's done, you have something that looks like that. Look at that.
that's gone hard and strong and really finished it off. Now, to get the tube to stay closed, when you close it, you need to make a cardboard collar. And the best way to do that is to draw around a ruler onto an empty cereal box. So you've got a strip cereal box card. And then just place your paint tube down and paste some glue around those overlapped newspaper bits just inside the editor. That's why I overlapped the newspaper. Very important, that. And then just roll your strip of cereal box card and pop it inside like that and allow it to spring out into shape and then get your fingers in there and spring it out into shape so that it's a perfect fit. And you could always just close it just to test that it's a good fit, but make sure you open it to dry it out. And when it's dry, you could paint it. Now, you could do any paint tube design you like. You could copy a real paint tube, or you could make your own one up. But I find it's a good idea to paint it white to start with on the paint tube itself. I'm just slapping that on there to show you. And then you could always paint the metal bits a sort of grey or grey silver. When you've done the whole thing again, you take your time doing it. Post the paint or acrylic paint. And when it's done, it looks something like that. And see what I've done here? I've painted it white, I've painted the metal bits a grey silver, I've painted the lid black, and I've even put on a strip of red here to show what colour paint is inside my paint tube. And to design the label itself, I've copied a real paint tube, I've written on red, you can write on Art Attack, or you can write on your own name, because after all, it is your paint tube, and all these other little bits and pieces and details I've just copied from a real paint tube. And then you just open it up, and you pop in your paintbrushes, and pens, and your other art materials. In it goes, all your art stuff, and then just close the lid, and there it is, your own Art Attack paint tube. Try it yourself. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> now, yeah, I know what you're thinking. What's he doing taking time off from making this video to have a break and eat a nice lolly? Well, that's where you're wrong. Because what I'm doing is I'm creating all materials for you, Tal. <laughs> and now you're probably thinking, what's he talking about? Well, apart from being great to eat, by finishing off this lolly, I've been left with a great art material, a lolly stick. Instead of just chucking it in the bin, keep it, wash it, and use it. And since this video is all about making things, here's a great idea that involves making something out of lolly sticks. Take a look at this easel. It's made entirely out of lolly sticks, and it's a perfect way to turn a picture into a masterpiece.